All right, thank you so much. Um, so I, I love the, the, all of that. That was great. That was awesome. Um, and I was debating whether or not to share this with you guys on my, on my talk, and, and that just sealed it for me that I definitely have to. So when I was here at LCA, one of the things I did was I was a cheerleader, because they used to have cheerleaders here. And uh, there was this thing that they would do at basketball games, and the whole school, like for real, they would actually like do it with, it was a thing. So I'm gonna teach it to you, and we're gonna do it, and this is gonna come back into play a little bit later on in our time together. So get ready, it's not hard. I believe in you guys, you can do this, okay? You, yeah. Can everybody do that? And then you clap twice. And then you do the other side. And then you clap once. Okay, okay, Todd, this, this happened, right? People did this. Okay, so clap, 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 clap. Okay, so the way the little cheer went, okay, is in the front they would say, Geo, go, go, Geo, go, go, lasers, go, because yeah, we were also called the lasers. And then everybody would do the little. Do you guys do something like this? This still happens? Yes! Oh, I am so pleased. Okay, fantastic. So let's just try it once and then I'll pray and we'll talk about Jesus. Okay, ready? 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 Here we go. Geo, go, go. Geo, go, go. Lasers, go. Oh, thank you. My heart is just exploding with joy. Okay, um, I'll explain how that makes sense a little bit later. But for now, uh, if you guys can pray with me, I'd really appreciate it. Um, dear God, thank you for joy, thank you for music, thank you for the fact that you love to hear our voice. Uh, however we're accompanied and in whatever um, place we're in, Lord, you love us and you want to hear from us, and this morning, this afternoon, Lord, we want to hear from you. And so would you just speak to us through your word, would you be here with us? In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so, I'm going to scooch this over. Um, the text that we're going to be looking at today is from the Sermon on the Mount, okay? And I think you can go to my first slide there. Let's see if it pops up. Yeah, there it is. Thank you. Thank you, slide people. Thank you. So this is from um, Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. And it says, it says this. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Um, so like I said, this is part of the, the Sermon on the Mount, and this is a part of the New Testament where Jesus is kind of speaking to a community. He's creating a community. He's talking about his kingdom, and he's giving kind of some guidelines, what it's going to look like to live in his kingdom, because communities look different, right? And so we all just did the little, like, hand clappy thing. That was something that, for me, is like a big part of my memory of my time as part of the LCA community. Um, there are other places I've been in community with people. One place that comes to my mind is actually camp. Raise your hand if you've ever been to a camp this summer here, somewhere. Wow, a lot of us. Okay, great. So you guys know when you go to camp, there are rules, right? Camps have rules. And some of those rules are kind of like common sense rules, like don't go off the property, don't go swimming at night without a lifeguard, things like that, right? But then there are other rules sometimes that are like specific to the camp, that really wouldn't make sense anywhere outside of the camp. So if you can go to, oh, the guys are good. Okay, so um, this is a picture from the camp that I'm kind of most connected to, and it's actually a camp in France. And so it's for speaking English, they teach English, and so I would go over as an English speaker to help French students learn English. And so one of our rules at camp was when you had meals, you had to have at least three English speakers at a table. Because what would happen sometimes is all the English speakers would clump together and all the French speakers would clump together and then they wouldn't mix. And so then that's like, what's the point of the camp, right? Um, and so that was a camp rule that was really important, but obviously you would never practice that rule anywhere else, 
right? You wouldn't go to like the food court at the mall and be like, excuse me, what language do you all speak? Is this the right ratio? Like, no, that's a very specific camp rule, right? Okay, I can go to the next one. Um, I remember there being some LCA rules, and so I'm curious if you guys can think for a second about rules of your life here that are like rules that are very specific to here. They're not really rules you would go make anybody else follow. Can anybody think of a rule that's like a spe Do you have one? You're like, no. Yeah, no. Anybody have a rule? You've got a rule. What's a rule to hear? Oh, is that a, that's a legit rule, huh? Only go to the vending machines when the lunch instructors tell you. Okay, yeah, that would be pretty silly if you went to like a movie theater and you saw someone at the vending machine and you're like, excuse me, were you told by your lunch instructor that it was okay? No, that's a, that's a rule here, right? Um, when I was here, we had a big rule, no leg mazes. And it was because kids would sit in the hallway and our student life director, Mr. Mez, would come through the hallway, no leg mazes. Again, a rule that was just for our community. So what Jesus is doing in the Sermon on the Mount is he's giving some rules for his community because he's creating a community with his life and his teaching on earth. Now, some of his rules are rules that apply all over the place. And yep, so some are like, don't murder people, right? Jesus is like, it's bad to kill people, you guys. And I think we can all agree, yes, that's bad. Everywhere you go, that's, a, that's something we shouldn't be doing. But then he gives these other rules, like the one that we read where he says, when you give to the needy, don't tell anybody. That's, that's kind of a weird rule, right? That's like a community-specific rule. And Jesus actually gives the same kind of rule when it comes to praying and when it comes to fasting. He's like, don't tell anybody. Keep it a secret. And so we have to wonder why. What's going on in this community that Jesus is creating that he's, he's got this kind of different rule for this sort of thing. And I think it actually ties into this theme you guys have been working through, which is practices that bring us closer to God, that make us more like him. Somehow, doing good things for others and keeping it a secret makes us more like God and brings us closer to him. The first thing I want us to notice, you can go to the next one there, is um, the rule is actually not to go help the needy. That's just assumed. It's when you give to the needy, okay? It's just, of course you're going to be doing this. People in this community, kingdom people, are going to be helping others. Um, and this looks different for different people in different situations, what it might mean to help somebody and help the needy, right? So it might be something like there's somebody who needs help and you like physically go and help them, right? Like they tripped and they dropped their stuff out of their backpack, and so you're going and you're helping them put the stuff back in the backpack. Um, sometimes it means giving money, because there are people who need money, and maybe you have a little bit of extra money, and you're able to give to help them in that way. Sometimes it's more um, intangible, right? Sometimes it's listening to that friend who's having a really hard day, and instead of jumping in immediately with, oh my goodness, I have a story just like that, talk, let's talk about me. Um, just listening, right? And just hearing them and just being there for them. That's a way of helping too. And Jesus assumes his people are going to engage in this sort of thing. And so he says, when you do this, when you help others, this is what it might look like. So let's think about some of what it looks like to help. Um, actually, okay, I need um, one volunteer. Can I get one volunteer? I see right here with the, with the jeans in the front and the shirt and the come on down. Come on down. Welcome. Volunteer, what is your name? Vanessa. Vanessa. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Okay, Vanessa's going to help me uh, act out a story that I'm hoping is really familiar to everybody, and it's the story of the Good Samaritan, okay? So, Vanessa, um, if you could just kind of go on a journey across the stage here. Just go on a little... Vanessa's on a journey... As Vanessa was on, keep going, you know, you can keep coming, come, come back this way. On her journey from Jerusalem to Jericho, she was, ah, attacked! You've been attacked by Lamb Chop, playing the role of robbers. Okay, so Vanessa was attacked by robbers. And so now she's, she is in need of help, right? And in the story, some different people walk by, right? A, 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 a Levite walks by. <laughs> and does not help Vanessa, okay? Terrible, okay? A priest, well, I'm so sorry. I don't know, what's up, Sabar? Are you gonna, does not help Vanessa.
Vanessa, okay? These people who you think would help, don't help. Poor Vanessa over here, she just, she just needs some help. And finally, a Samaritan comes by, okay? And the Samaritan comes and helps, helps her up. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. He's like, it's okay, Vanessa. And together, he, they put it on his own donkey. They go to the inn, and, and our panda bear Samaritan gives money to the innkeeper and says, take care of her for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Jesus, Jesus tells that parable when someone uh, is trying to figure out what it means to love and who they're supposed to love. Someone comes up to Jesus and he's like, how do I get to be on God's good side? And Jesus is like, love God, love others. Love your neighbor as yourself. And the guy's like, well, who's my neighbor? So Jesus tells this story. Maybe with stuffed animals. I don't know. The gospel authors don't tell us. Um, but he told this story, right? And he uses this as an example. He's saying this is what it looks like to love. To love is to help. It's not enough not to rob, and it's not, you can't just walk by and be like, oh, poor you, and keep going. To love is to help, and we're called to love, and we're called to help. When, when you give to the needy, when you help those around you, when you love other people. What, how are we supposed to do it? You're supposed to keep it a secret. You're supposed to keep it a secret. Why? <laughs> Why? Why would you want to keep that a secret? Why wouldn't you want other people to know about the nice thing that happened? Oh, you got an answer? I would love it. You have a, no, no, maybe, maybe. Answer? Okay, because sometimes when other people are looking at us, maybe we get a little bit of pride in that and we start thinking highly of ourselves. Great answer. Any other suggestions? Why? Yeah. Because you shouldn't do something nice. Okay, so if you're doing something nice, but you kind of have an ulterior motive, it kind of cheapens the nice thing, right? Excellent. Any other thoughts? Why would we want to keep it a secret? Yeah, one more. Modesty. Modesty. Modest is hottest. What do you mean by modesty? <laughs> You guys use that one? No? <laughs> Modesty meaning? Like, not showing. I don't know. Not showing. Yeah, being, like you were saying, you know, sometimes you take too much pride. Jesus has a lot to say about being humble, right? And showing humility. I think modesty goes along with that for sure. For sure. Um, we lose something. We lose something when we go around advertising our good deeds. Yeah, so Jesus, in the passage, he says that there's actually a, a reward in play that somehow you might lose out on. Because if you go around and you're getting all the people saying, wow, you did such a good thing. Good job, Panda Bear. You helped Vanessa. That's amazing. Then that's, that's, that's all the reward, right? You're not going to get any more reward because you've already gotten your reward in that. So Jesus says that you might miss out on some sort of reward if you go around advertising it too much. He also, he's specifically calling out people, um, like you said, who, who are kind of doing the good thing just to get people to like them, right? And that's, they're being kind of uh, hypocrites. And so when we do good things and we go around and we advertise it and make a big fuss out of it, it might, not always, but it might reveal a heart attitude of hypocrisy. That I wasn't really helping that person to help them. I was just helping them so I would look good and people would like me and they would think more of me. Um, but it also, it might have the unintended consequence of hurting the person that you helped. I'll give you an example. Okay, so when I was, oh, I don't know, fourth, fourth or fifth grade maybe, I used to take dance classes. And so we'd drive, my mom would drive me to dance classes. And I remember one night, it was raining on the way to dance classes, and there was um, this girl who was in my class, and I don't remember if she was just walking because she lived close by, or if she was maybe waiting at a bus stop or something, but my mom was like, oh, isn't she in your class? Well, let's see if she needs a ride. And so we like rolled down the window, and she was like, oh yeah, that would be great, thanks. And so she hopped in the car, and we drove to dance class. No big deal, right? And uh, a little bit later, and I don't know what, I don't know why <laughs> I decided to do this, but I was, you know, talking to some of the other girls, and I was like, oh, you'll never believe what happened. We were driving along, and, you know, it was raining so much, and we looked out our window, and 
who did we see? But that girl right there, there she was. And she was like getting wet. And so we pulled over and we brought her in our car. And so I drove her here. That's how she got here. And I, again, I don't know what in my fourth or fifth grade mind I was thinking, but I remember making eye contact with that girl who we had given the ride to. And she just looked so embarrassed. And I really didn't, I wasn't trying to say that story to embarrass her, right? I was just, I don't know, making conversation or it was something interesting. Um, but I, you know, I don't know why she was waiting for that ride or why she didn't have a ride. And, and somehow me making a big public fuss of that, it hurt her. Um, and I felt really, really bad about that. You know, because it kind of, it was like, I bet she would have rather just walked instead of having me point that out to everybody. Uh, again, that doesn't always happen. It's not that always when we, you know, tell other people about good things that we're hurting somebody, but it, it can happen. And I think that's one thing we want to really keep in mind. Um, but we do this all the time. People do this all the time. We advertise our good deeds. Are any of you familiar with a YouTube personality named Mr. Beast? Is anybody familiar? Okay, a bunch of you are. Um, I'm not, really, I'll be honest, but my husband is. And so he tells me about Mr. Beast and his videos and what he does. And I guess he does these like crazy stunts, right? And then um, videos it, puts it on YouTube, and like all these people like it and watch it. And so you can see here, I kind of made it bigger. Um, he, one of these, he gives a random homeless man $10,000. So you can go and you can watch the video of him finding this random homeless man and giving him $10,000. And uh, it's on YouTube, and so he has, what is that, nine... Million nine hundred and seventy six thousand one hundred and eight views, right? And uh, 496,000 likes. A lot of people are seeing this Mr. Beast guy give $10,000 to a homeless man. Um, I don't know Mr. Beast, okay? I can't speak to what's going on in his heart. Um, but I think there's, there's something he's gaining from putting this on YouTube. Right? There is some sort of notoriety, popularity. I don't know if he's monetizing this in some way for himself, right? But so he's, he's doing this good thing. Is it nice to give $10,000 to someone? Yeah, that's really nice, right? Um, but he's doing it in this very public way. And I think it's possible, I think we could say that maybe he's received his reward for that, right? Because his reward was 9 million views and 496,000 likes. But we got to be really careful when we see these people on the social media doing the things like this because Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount also tells us something else. He tells us, and you can go to the next, there we go, don't judge other people. <laughs> Did any of you feel yourself judging Mr. Beast right now? Just, just then, were you sitting there like, oh, Mr. Beast? I know, ha ha, Jesus got you. Because we're also not supposed to judge people, right? Okay. Jesus says this in the next chapter, Sermon on the Mount, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Um, Jesus does not tell us to go around watching other people, seeing if they're advertising their good deeds, right? That's not part of his community rules and principles. It's not go around and you make sure that other people aren't being hypocrites. He's just talking right to us. He's talking right to you and he's talking right to me. Um, and I really, I'm not in a position to judge Mr. Beast because in the next picture you're going to see, I too put images on the social media um, when I help out others. So I volunteer with my church youth group. The picture on the left there is from a couple of years ago. We did something called the Spigot River Cleanup. And I very distinctly, you know, you're going around and kind of picking up trash around this river. And I remember in that moment being like, okay, guys, let's get a picture so we can put it on Facebook. Jeez, right? We want other people to know that our youth group is doing this thing. Jeez. Um, and I think I've actually joked with my youth group kids, like, okay, guys, get together. We got to take a picture. Otherwise, what was the point of all of this, right? And it's like, well, hopefully the point is that you're helping people, right? Hopefully the point is that you're giving to the needy and doing the good thing. But sometimes we get in this sense of like, the only reason we do the thing is so we can put it on the internet and other people can see that we did it. The other picture is my husband and I, we did um, like a 5K to raise awareness for an organization local called Live for Live. And um, for that one, it was less of a look at this good thing we're doing. It was a little bit, look, I can still run a 5K. Um, but it was a lot of it trying to let other people know about this organization. Because here's the thing, Jesus says, keep it a secret, right? 
And I think that is obviously true because Jesus said it. There are also times, though, where it makes sense to tell other people about something that's going on. Okay? So, for example, did any of you know what Live for Live is before I just said the words? Do any of you know? Anybody familiar? So it's a, a local organization that... Okay, <laughs> This is all over now, so you can go ask her later. Um, but it's a local organization, and they raise money, and they do really good things, right? And so we were trying to promote them and kind of let other people know about the fact that they exist. Sometimes we tell other people about the good things we do so that more people can come help. Another thing, and I want to say this specifically to you guys as middle schoolers, um, remember how I said sometimes we help people in intangible ways, like we listen to a friend when they're going through a hard time, right? Sometimes that's a good thing, that we really should not keep secret. Like sometimes our friends trust us with big stuff and it can be kind of too big for one person to hold on to, or it's something that maybe they're gonna do something that could be harmful to them or harmful to others or something harmful has happened. Um, Jesus is not saying in those situations, help your friend and don't tell anybody about it. In those situations, it is help your friend and make sure they're getting the help that they need. Right? So I just wanted to put that out there because I know that that's a way that often people in our kind of community, high school, middle school, we help each other, and that is a real legitimate way to help. Make sure that's not the kind of help that you're keeping secret, right? Um, because Jesus actually, also in the Sermon on the Mount, tells us that we should do good things so that other people will see it. Yeah, so this is from um, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Anybody pick up the difference between where Jesus says, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, don't you let know your left hand know what your right hand is doing, keep it a secret, versus here, when he says, let other people see, is he contradicting himself? What's, why would sometimes we keep it a secret and sometimes we don't? All right, I gave you a little bit of a, a hint there where I underlined it. The idea is that we want people to glorify God, right? And so if people are seeing us just living out our life in this kingdom community and they see that and they recognize that that's God in us, that's good. If we're going around showing everybody, look, I helped this person, I helped this person to get the attention and glory for us, that's the problem. That's what's not so good. Okay, so I need two more volunteers. Two more, I saw a hand, and I get one right next to each other. Come on down, come on down, guys. Okay, thank you. So you're just gonna come stand right up here, and we're just gonna do a little um, illustration of something. Okay, so can I get, can we stand right here, and kind of right here, kind of right next to each other? Yeah, great, okay. So you've got your right hand, right? And your left hand, okay. So our text, it text says, when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So what is your name? Aubrey. Aubrey. Aubrey is going to be playing the role of left hand. And what is your name? Amina. Amina. Amina is going to be playing the role of right hand. Okay, so I've got these um, really nice and colorful uh, stuffed animals here, okay? So what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to pick one up in such a way, okay, okay. Now, Aubrey, don't, don't turn over here or anything. Can you tell which one she picked up? <laughs> It was the elephant, wow, was that a guess or did you see it? Was that a pure guess? That was that impressive. Was guess. That, that was, was impressive, guess. okay. So now, okay, this is good, this is good. What? It was a guess. Okay, now I want you to pick up, pick up another one, and this time I want you to wave around a little bit. Pick it up and wave around. Can you tell which one it is? Panda. The panda, okay, was that a guess or did you see it? No, I was looking straight ahead, I, that was a guess. That, that was a guess too, okay. Oh, yes. Okay, this time, 
I want you to take one of them. And I want you to take one of them. Don't make my hand. back to the front and a round of applause for our volunteers. Thank you, volunteers. <laughs> okay, you guys did a great job. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Oh. My little Samaritan. Okay. Um. <laughs> Why'd we do that? Okay, so uh, that was a little bit of an example of this idea of doing things right? And whether or not your, your left hand could know what your right hand was doing, okay? There was actually a good amount of stuff that Amina could do without Aubrey really being able to see it, right? So this is not saying that if you're, if you're going to go and, you know, help people in order to keep it a secret, you have to, like, become Batman, right? Like, you don't, it doesn't have to be this whole big thing that you're consumed with, like, I can't let anyone ever see me ever do the good deed. It has to be totally secret because, no, there's actually a lot of, a lot of freedom we have, right, to do the thing. But the minute it was like, hey, everybody, I'm going to throw this at you, right, and then she threw, that, that was the issue. That's where we have the big deals. When we make a big deal of ourselves, that's when the, the helping others can become problematic. Um, there are ways of interpreting this verse, actually, that do go even kind of more secretive with it, though. I heard one on the radio that talked about how um, if you're trying to not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, when you reach in your money, to uh, reach in your pocket to give money to somebody, um, you shouldn't look and see how much money's in your pocket. You should just take whatever it is and give it so that you don't even know how generous you're being. I think that's an interesting take. Um, but I want to I kind of bring this back, and I want to say, what does this have to do with getting closer to God? What does this have to do with kind of spiritual disciplines? How does this help us be more like Christ? How does this help us be in relationship with him? Um, does anybody, have you ever had an inside joke with somebody else? You ever had an inside joke? Yeah, okay. And what happens when you have that inside joke with someone, right? You and that person... That's like, that's a connection point, right? You're like a little closer together because of that inside joke. And if that inside joke becomes like a public joke that everybody jokes, that's fine. It's nice to share the joke, but it's not as special. That connection is not as special, right? And the way I like to think about it is we can have kind of these little inside jokes with God where we can do these things. We can help other people. We can pray. We can fast. And instead of making it a big, big public show so that it's all about all eyes on us, it's like we do it and we, we don't tell anybody, but God knows, right? Your father who sees what is done in secret, he sees it. And then you have that little connection, that little inside joke, that little secret with him. And the more that we do this, the more that we have these little things that are just between us and God, it builds that relationship. Just like with a friend, you build that relationship having inside jokes and secrets with them. And sometimes this can be big things. Sometimes this can be really little things, right? Um, but that's an opportunity. There's an opportunity every day to do a little something and keep it as an inside joke between you and the Lord. Um, when I was at LCA, there was actually this, like, secret society that existed called SCARE, S-K-A-R-E, SCARE. And it was some kind acts randomly everywhere. And what they would do is they would go and like, like put cookies on a teacher's desk. And then they'd write on the whiteboard, you've been scared. Um, or they would like put a little like post-it note on someone's locker that's like, you're beautiful today. You've been scared. And, and, and we didn't know who was in the group, right? Um, but like, what a fun little way to have this inside joke, but like a really positive thing, doing these nice things and not making a big fuss about like, it's me, I'm the president of SCARE. Um, but it was just this little way that the community could kind of care for each other. And that brings us closer to God. Because ultimately, um, that's, what, that's what God did. 
right? And I'll kind of end with this. This is kind of our closing gospel thought. Um, use the word modest. I kind of came back with the word humility. That's, that's who Jesus was. Jesus did the biggest thing. He did the biggest thing. He came and he lived a perfect life and he died and he took all of this punishment on him and then he rose again from the grave and he did that as a man 2,000 years ago, you know, before cable news networks and YouTube and ways that you could, you know, put that information out there all over the place. And he didn't do it. He didn't go right march up to Caesar in Rome and say, hello, I'm God and I'm going to die for your sins. Everyone, look at me, look at me, right? No, he did it in this, this small little part of the empire. And even as he was healing people, sometimes he'll heal someone and he'll say, don't tell anybody who healed you. Just go show yourself to the priest, right? Jesus, God, the God of the universe, made it a point to do kind things, do the biggest kind thing, and not make it all about the thing he was doing. And so we have these opportunities in tiny little ways to reflect that and to get closer to him and become more like him. And so I want to encourage you just to think for the rest of the day, for the rest of this week, um, I know the year's coming to a close, maybe by the end of the school year. Is there something, some way that you can help someone else and keep it a secret and build that little inside joke with God and get closer to him? Because as we do that, we get to look more like him, this God who loved us. Do you guys pray for me? Pray with me. You can pray for me too. Um, dear God, thank you that you cared so much for us that you did that big thing. And thank you, God, that through the power of your spirit, we get to do little things for each other, that we get to care for each other and help each other. Um, help us to do that in a way that brings you glory, whether other people see it and they glorify you because of it, or if we keep it a secret and we get to have those inside special jokes with you. God, help us to love each other and be in this community, be kingdom people, like you talked about. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to this message. To keep up with more messages and Bible teaching, you can like and subscribe.